Okay, we're here at a freezing dark Crow Park. We didn't expect to be here, Kleena. Um, a chaotic morning after a chaotic week. It's just uh, the last thing the girls needed before that game, really, wasn't it? It was a mad switch, really. Uh, 12 o'clock today, we were told uh, the game has been moved from Parnell Park to Crow Park uh, and throwing in a half an hour early. So, I mean, you can see maybe they, uh, people made the best decision or what they thought was the best decision at the time. They wanted the game to go ahead, the, get, the pitch was unplayable, it was too cold or frozen over in Parnell Park. So, what are you going to do? You have a venue up the road, um, maybe with the caveat that we have to throw in at one o'clock. So, I suppose it was a case of just taking what was available to ensure the game went ahead. But right now, we don't know the exact details of, of that or how it could have been done differently. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy beforehand because we got here, like we had arrived at Parnell, we were there ready to go and then we got the notice that it's coming down here. We came down here and we obviously had a bit of tuna thrown outside, but that's not to do with the teams. But even for the teams, you could see Goway arrived quite late, it appeared. Um, they were out for their warm-up. It only felt like about five, ten minutes. The game went, was then pushed from one to ten past one. Just all in all, just seems very, for an Ireland Island semi-final, it just seems the, the beyond crazy farcical scenes almost. Yeah, I suppose it, it, it would be challenging for a player. So, so sitting here in advance of the game, I think Galway, Galway arrived. It was I remember looking at the clock and it was 12:58, and Galway still weren't on the pitch, nor was a referee. Cork had been out for probably 10 or 12 minutes. Now the game didn't throw in at one; it threw in at about 10 past or 11 minutes past. So, they probably Galway I'd say had a five-six minute warm up on the pitch. Now whether they were doing something in the dressing room is a different story. But even as the referee was frantically blowing his whistle, Cork were sort of taking their positions and pushing, pushing themselves on the pitch and Galway still had their training tops on. So it definitely wasn't an ideal start. Now, whether that was made any impact on the result, by the scoreline it w w would suggest that it didn't um, because, I mean, it wasn't a one or two point win, it was a comprehensive uh, victory for Cork. So maybe Cork were just able to deal with it better and, and, and got on with it a bit, a bit better than Galway did. Just as a player, like for someone that has played at the highest level as well, that level of preparation or lack of preparation, a change of venue, etc., etc., that's just not ideal circumstances, really, is it? It's definitely not ideal circumstances because every element and every person involved in, in the setup of a match day it goes by schedule. And you literally have a schedule pretty much down to the last minute, especially when you get to the venue. Having said that, um, on our Dublin win in 2010 we had a complete mix up with our bus and we ended up our, our bus being late and I remember sitting in St Bridget's looking at my watch thinking I should be in Crow Park doing my warm up now now we went on to win that day a different scenario but sometimes you just it's it's a live show and you've just got to get on with it and roll with it a little bit because mad things happen every now and then you spoke about Cork being here first during their warm-up first and they definitely were the first to pretty much everything uh, although Galway did take the lead with initially with the free I think it was probably the only time they led in the game um, Cork were absolutely so impressive from an attacking point of view it was a defensive Galway shape that we probably expected but the way they were able to run through runners passes on the shoulder it was a brilliant uh, display of attacking football from Cork really wasn't it? I thought Galway started better actually probably in the first eight ten minutes Galway looked like they were the, they were the better team then the longer the game went on the the better court got and the more the more the gap between the two teams opened up. I think the difference between Cork and Galway today was Cork's ability to actually get through the Galway defence. They scored two goals, they probably had another five or six chances. I didn't think Galway threatened the Cork uh, goalkeeper at all really today. So where, where both teams ran through the middle of the pitch and Galway did try and play fast, aggressive football, once they got inside or anywhere near the Cork D really, the ball was turned over, they kicked it wide, they brought it into contact. So they didn't really look threatening in the area of the pitch where you want to be most threatening. They looked threatening in their own 45. Um, but Cork on the other hand, yeah, ju just very confident on the ball, good strong athletic runners, good strong forwards who were able to find gaps and drive through and really, really go for the juggler when they get the chance. Yeah, and absolutely, and the first half, pretty much wrapped up the game the second half was pretty much a non-event really um, kind of even you think back afterwards it's hard to remember apart from dominant and attack after attack from Cork got the fight back never really came from Galway at any stage really not 
not really the, the start of the second half. I thought there was a great pace to it, both to you, and you thought, oh, you know, things going to change here. But it just fizzled out for Galway. And then Sinead Burke got sin, sin binned, I think, with 12 minutes on the clock. So they were missing a very key defender for, for 10 minutes of the game. Um, so that obviously didn't help and probably gave more space in, the, in, their, in their defensive line and, and losing that bit of experience. But Galway never really looked like they were going to get back in the game. They didn't look like they were going to score goals and they didn't look like they were going to close the gap. I think at half time there was maybe seven or eight points in it. And it never, after the first five minutes in the second half, you kind of knew it was over, that Cork were just nearly striding out and getting stronger with every minute that was passing. Yeah, and absolutely. And look, it's Cork now through to the final. That's Galway. It seemed to have the, the hoodoo really against Cork. It's five championship defeats in a row, but from Cork, they obviously set up the, I suppose, the age-old uh, modern-day uh, ladies' football rivalry that is, of course, Dublin and Cork. It's probably going to be a great final again. You've played in so many of these battles again. How do you see, or how would you reline up? Obviously, there was a great semi-final last week as well, where Dublin pretty much ground down a, a very young and attacking Armad, uh, Armad uh, defence. We saw how, how, how brilliant Cork were attacking today as well. It really sets up a great final, doesn't it? I think today's result means you've got the two best ladies football teams playing in the final, which is what you want your championship to be. Um, I, I think these teams are actually quite similar, the two of them. They, they, they play a similar enough style. They're, they're both physically fit and the, the same type of players. They've got good speed, they've got good athleticism, good uh, strength and height and all of that. So, so physically, I think they're matched. And I think from a skill set point of view, they're also matched. So. I don't see this as a oh, Dublin are going to dominate for 10 years in ladies football. I, I don't see that. Cork are, Cork are close. Cork are not, uh, are not miles away, even though people say this is a new Cork team. Well, it's not really, you know, the Cork, this Cork team from the, the last dominant one, or the last decade, it's been a slow evolution, you know, and they haven't been that, that far away uh, from, from Dublin in the last three years. Yeah, and of course, there's so much modern history between the two teams as well. Like, I think this is the seventh Dub final Dublin, Dublin are in, and there was, well, they have won the last three. Before that, it was defeat after defeat. It felt like the Cork as well. So there's just so many angles, so many facets of this game, which uh, it really is. It's going to be back in probably uh, very similar conditions to where we have today. As you can see by the camera, f uh, almost dark. You can hardly see over the back of Hill 16 here. Uh, cold, bitterly cold. And that same sort of environment again, really, on the 20th of December. It will be the strangest, strangest weekend, an all Ireland final on the 20th of December. Um, and it probably will be freezing if today is anything to go by. But, I mean, isn't it in some ways exciting? Like an all Ireland final on the 20th of December between two top class, the best ladies football teams in the country who, like, they won't say it, but I'll say it, probably hate each other on the pitch. You know, there's been so many, so much rivalry. Dublin have so much hurt in three All Ireland finals defeats uh, to the, to this modern Cork team, and then Cork the last three years haven't haven't uh, were knocked off their pedestal the last three years. So it's it's really fantastic, and it's it'll be fantastic on the 20th of December. Absolute madness uh, to be here on the 20th of December in who knows what type of conditions with, with no spectators to see these teams these two teams slug it out. But it's it's it'll be great. It'll be good good game. I certainly hope it's not going to be any colder for the players involved because it is Baltic here. Um, we're going to have to push you then on a winger. I know you're just after fresh after seeing a relatively enough a, a dominant Cork display. We saw Dublin good last week. Uh, I know you have your own uh, the the little uh, the, the little biases as well. But uh, how do you see this final going? As you said, two very similarly matched teams with huge amount of history against each other as well. How do you see it going? I I think. As always, I, th I think it'll definitely be close. I think this, this one is hard to call. I don't think Dublin have been firing on all cylinders. I think they're slowly finding their rhythm, slowly, but they're not there yet. They Yes, they did beat Armagh, but I didn't think that they were exceptional against Armagh. Uh, Cork, on the other hand, had a good Munster match in their group with, with Kerry. Then a, a, a really a non-event against Cavan. They have, so, so this is a really good warm-up for Cork. It's a week later. Dublin played last week, obviously, so they have two weeks now to prepare. Um, as opposed to Dublin's three, but maybe this type of game and all the, the craziness around today, will, will they'll, they'll come into it maybe a little bit more battle-hardened. So I, to be honest, this year, I would find it hard to call. I think it would be close. One word answer. Who are you going to go for? I'll go with Dublin. Listen, thank you very much. Let you go warm up.